Hello Internet, welcome to another Antenna tutorial. In this tutorial, I'll discuss the designing of an Endfire array. It's an extension of broadside array in terms of complexity. So I highly recommend watching my previous video on broadside array for better understanding. Now, in case of broadside array, we used to give same power to all the elements, but that is not going to happen anymore in Nfire array. Now depending upon the distance between the elements we are going to give an exactly same amount of phase difference between the elements and that will be known as progressive phase shift. Now for example I have kept the distance between the two elements to be equivalent to 3 meters and we are operating at a lambda of 6 meters so the distance between the elements in terms of lambda becomes equivalent to lambda by 2 so I'll have to give a phase shift of 180 degrees in progressive elements because lambda is a representative of 360 degrees and lambda by 2 will be a representative of 180 degrees now this progressive phase shift that we give between the elements is directly proportional to the distance between the elements had this distance bet between the elements be 1.5 meters that would have given me the distance as lambda by 4 in terms of lambda and I would have given a phase shift of lambda by 4 is equal to 90 degrees between the progressive elements so for example had we designed a four elements and fire array with 1.5 meters distance between all the elements and lambda being 6 this could have been written as lambda by 4 lambda by 4 uniform spacing and the phase shift between the elements would have been progressively 90 degrees so the first element would be given a signal starting from zero the next element would be phase shifted by 90 degrees and next would be phase shifted by an additional 90 degrees that comes out to be 180 degrees with respect to the first one and so on and so forth so that's the basic design criteria of end file array now once that happens we consider two point sources just like we did in broadside array and we try to measure the electric field intensity E which will be a resultant of E1 plus E2 which will be a resultant of E1 and E2 the electric field intensity because of point source 1 and because of point source 2 and in case of end fire array the normalized electric field intensity now I'm skipping this part for the sake of simplicity becomes equivalent to sine of pi by 2 cos theta now if you remember the case of broadside array it used to be cos of pi by 2 cos theta in case of 
uh, n far array it is going to be sine of pi by 2 cos theta and as you can see the electric field intensity received at a point is a function of theta so as we move this point uh, in terms of angle from these two point sources the electric field intensity will also change and the purpose is to find out the points where maximum electric field intensity is received and to find out the purpose where no electric field is received whatsoever and the third part is we need to find theta HPPD which is the half power point distributions so uh, we need to find out theta max theta min and theta HPPD theta max is found out by putting this thing equivalent to plus minus one because the maximum value that sign can take is plus minus one theta min so we can put a subscript max here and theta min is found out using putting the value zero and theta HPPD is found out using equal and to one by root two because we are talking in terms of electric field intensity not in terms of power so electric field intensity is proportional to square root of power so this gives me point of maximum radiation at 0 and 180 degrees this gives me point of minimum radiation at 90 and 270 and theta SPVD comes out to be 60 and 120 now if you have watched my previous video for broadside array you can see the values of theta max and theta min have reversed so now you have an idea as to how you can plot the radiation pattern so this time around the maximas are at 0 and 180 degrees so we will try to draw our major lobes at 0 and 180 degrees but we need to remember that the major lobes should pass the half power point distributions so if we draw angles of 60 degrees and 120 degrees our major lobe should pass through 60 degrees and 120 degrees in the other quadrant now you could see that the half power beam width is equivalent to 60 plus 60 120 degrees whereas in case of broadside array it was uh, 30 plus 30 which is equivalent to 90 degrees so you could say that n fire array uh, is more omnidirectional as compared to broadside array or broadside array has more directivity as compared to n fire array because the half power beam width was more concentrated in broadside array as compared to n fire array so the angles at which no power is being distributed is very very small here so n fire array throws energy in almost all directions leaving a few angles whereas in case of broadside array it was highly concentrated and directional 
So this basic difference of end fire array and broadside array is manipulated in designing horizontally aligned or vertically aligned antennas that we'll discuss in the future. And I hope the basic construction of an end fire array and the basic theory behind it um, is clear now. And thank you so much for watching this video. And if this video was a help, then please consider subscribing this channel. That will be a great help. Have a good day and a good life. Bye.